everyone this is dr audit the sibi chakravarti from dr talks today we will be dealing with obstructive sleep apnea so we will start uh, we will start with the case history a 50 year old male who is a known case of a diabetes mellitus hypertension obesity cad dyslipidemia this patient is having complaints of loud snoring and frequent disturbance of sleep with it poor increased daytime sleepiness and poor focus in work this complaint is present for the past 6 month on examination and also the patient is having breathlessness for the past 3 days with complaints of leg swelling uh, leg swelling this patient or uh, i was present presented on exam he has a blood pressure of 180 by 110 and the patient is found to have increased neck circumference and waist circumference and the patient uh, and has got uh, was thought to be having or obstructive sleep apnea then the patient was examined and he with he had an upward sleeping score of 90 and the patient was subjected to P, uh, the polysomnographic study and the and uh, his apnea hypopnea index was found to be 46 and the polysomnography studies confirmed the presence of obstructive sleep apnea then the patient was given oxygen some diuretics and the patient was started on cpap once he was started on cpap his symptoms get got improved but he is developed claustrophobic to cpap and he was asking for some other treatment then the patient omf omf consult was obtained and the patient was started on olopalatal vaginoplasty once done the patient was discharged with advice for weight loss and adequate control of blood pressure and diabetes mellitus so this is the stereotype uh, case of obstructive sleep apnea so first we will define what is obstructive sleep apnea obstructive sleep apnea is a is a diagnosis that is made with the help of both nocturnal finding diurnal finding and sleep study finding what are the nocturnal findings the patient can have snoring snorting patient can have frequent apnea during sleep frequent awakening during sleep a disturbed nocturnal night sleep this with the presence of diurnal symptoms like increase of daytime sleepiness poor focus the patient can have uh, increased fatigue this are the daytime symptoms with sleep study findings which we will be doing later so what is the pathophysiology of oceas normally during inspiration there is a negative intraluminal pressure within the nasopharynx and the oropharynx so uh, this will try to collapse the airways this collapse of the airway is usually prevented by two mechanisms one there will be dilated pharyngeal muscles uh, whose action will depend on the neuromuscular tone second uh, during sleep there will be raise in the pco2 uh, sleep uh, co2 retention will be there this will increase the tone of the diaphragm muscle and the uh, dilated pharyngeal muscles these two mechanism will keep the airway open which will prevent this collapse however sometimes during sleep uh, the patient will have a decrease in the neuromuscular transmission this decrease in neuromuscular transmission will reduce the tone of the oropharyngeal muscle this will cause the oropharyngeal muscles to collapse and awakening the patient's neuromuscular tone improves and the condition reverses so this is the uh, basic pathophysiology there can be two problems with this co2 sensitivity the patient can have an increased arousal threshold that means the patient can frequently arouse during sleep and the patient will have a or patient can have decreased uh, arousing threshold which will increase the duration of apnea will increase the severity of apnea so this is the pathophysiology so what who are the high risk features who are high risk patient the patients who are diabetic the patients who are obese the patient especially obese male have got higher risk of developing obstructive sleep apnea than other patients the other complaints in other risk factors include syndromes like down syndrome trichter collins syndrome uh, the patient can have problems like uh, micrognathia retrognathia peri robin syndrome this problem the or the patient can have a hypothyroidism or a patient can have acromegaly these patients are at high risk of developing obstructive sleep apnea a oropharyngeal examination uh, the signs symptoms there is basically three nocturnal symptom diurnal symptom these are the two basic symptoms there is a signs the nasal cavity examination will reveal a nasal polyp or a deviated nasal septum 
oral cavity examination can reveal a large tongue, large tonsil. The patient can have large vula. The patient can have uh, uh, the, these findings. Uh, or a low lying palate, microphthalmia, retrochthalmia. These findings can be there. The patient can also have findings of carpalmonate, right heart failure, or left heart failure because of a long standing uh, hypertension. So, what are the complications you can have as a result of OSHAs? The patient can have hypertension. This hypertension is usually uh, there won't be any nocturnal dipping on an ambulatory BP measurement. This will usually be a resistant hypertension. This is because of increased sympathetic activity and RAS activity. This will cause hypertension. Once this hypertension is treated with CPAP, it usually decreases to a good amount. The other complication are the cardiac complication, where the patient can have increased risk of atherosclerosis, increased risk of acute coronary syndrome, uh, patient can have heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, the patient can have atrial arrhythmias, ventricular arrhythmias, the patient can have uh, all these findings. Uh, and also, if, if this CPAP, uh, this OSHAS can worsen the insulin resistance and can cause the diabetic, poor diabetic control. Uh, these are the, and there is quality of life, the patient's act, uh, work related activity will be very poor. These are the basic symptoms. So, how do you diagnose? The diagnosis is based on overnight polysomnography. This is the gold standard for diagnosis. This overnight polysomnography is usually done in a laboratory. I, home based studies uh, have got lesser uh, usefulness than lab studies. The patients will have been subjected to uh, the respiratory airflow measurement, the saturation SpO2 measurement, there will be ECG monitoring, electroencephalogram and uh, EOG monitoring, is sleep uh, stages of sleep and duration of sleep will all be studied, leg movement will be measured with the help of leg sensors, this will be this uh, polysomnography can identify the apnea hypopnea index. What is the apnea hypopnea index? Apnea hypopnea index means the episode of apnea plus hypopnea per hour of sleep. That is apnea hypopnea index. Based on, on the number of apnea hypopnea index, it can be related to mild, moderate, severe. Mild has got 5 to 15 apnea hypopnea index per hour of sleep. Moderate 15 to 30 per hour of sleep. And severe more than 30 episodes per hour of sleep. This is how we classify based on apnea hypopnea index. Then the what we will define the terms of what is Apnea, hypopnea, what is AHI and what is RDI. We will define the, all these force. Apnea means there is a decrease in air flow for more period of more than 10 seconds during sleep. This is what is called as apnea. Hypopnea means there is a 30% decrease in the air flow for 10 seconds during sleep or a 3% fall in saturation or a patient having a cortical arousal. Any of the three quantifies the hypopnea episodes. So, apnea hypopnea means number of episodes of apnea plus hypopnea per hour of sleep. That is the apnea hypopnea index and RDI, uh, the, uh, this RDI index means number of apnea plus hypopnea plus RERA, RERA per hour of sleep. This is the uh, diagnosis. Then you can also measure on the sleep latency. That is uh, the difference between the patient going to the bed and the onset of sleep. That's the time difference called sleep latency. And sleep efficiency means the percentage of time spent in sleep to the ratio of percentage of time slept in uh, spent in bed. That ratio is the sleep efficiency. And the number of episodes of arousal is called as the arousal index. So how do you manage? Management is uh, done in three parts. The first is the general management part. The patient uh, would be asked to reduce his weight. That is the most important step. Secondly, the patient with hypoxia will be administered oxygen. Then the patient will be asked to have a particular time for going into bed and particular time for waking up. The duration of sleep should be constant and it should be uh, preferred in a regularly in the same timings should be maintained. Then all his nasal allergy should be treated. Uh, his alcoholism should be avoided, sedative drugs should be avoided. These are the general measures. The treatment for OSHAs is the CPAP, which is the continuous positive airway pressure. What does the CPAP do? 
this CPAP will open the airways, will prevent the collapse of the airways. This can be given either by nasal CPAP or nasal oral CPAP. What are the benefits? CPAP will reduce the blood pressure. CPAP will reduce the uh, incidence of complication and improve the quality of life. It improves the risk of atrial fibrillation. The, 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 risk, the problem with CPAP is that they, it can increase the claustrophobia in patients. It can uh, the complications. It can increase the risk of uh, claustrophobia. That can be nasal bridge difficult. The nasal bridge injury. The patient can have difficulty in the compliance with the system. These are the major problems. If the patient is not affordable for CPAP or the patient has got some complication with CPAP, he can advise surgery. The most commonly done surgery is the oolopalatopharyngoplasty. This oolopalatopharyngoplasty is done by the home of a surgeon, which involves removal of the uh, part of the oola and the soft palate. Uh, this is the most effective surgery for CPAP. So less effective than uh, uh, less effective than CPAP. It is the most commonly done surgery for OSHAs. We can also do other thing. Other recently, unilateral hypoglossal stimulation that has been tried. You can go for radio frequency laser ablation can also be tried. Uh, you can go for injection into the soft palate that can also be tried. Uh, but these are not as effective as the above measures. So this sums up our discussion on obstructive sleep apnea hypopnea syndrome. I hope this was useful. If you like the discussion, I would like you to uh, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and like and comment with the videos. Your opinion. Thank you.